Welcome to Nugget 116 with Steve Groman. We do want to know there's absolutely no way we can give this man credit or do him justice, I guess. He is someone that you need to research on your own. We can promise it will be rewarding. It wouldn't be a couple of five or seven minute nuggets. It would be a, a good two hour YouTube video to try to explain things. In we depth. just hope we've sparked hope, your interest. Yes, yes. August 2020, Science News did an article talking about Tesla's life lights up offbeat film. These people made a movie out of his life. It's a day David Goliath's story of the industrial age. Young, idealistic Nikola Tesla came to the United States in 1884, hoping that electricity mogul Thomas Edison would work with him on a new system for generating and distributing electricity. This article does make a point, as they're calling him David and Goliath, and something that I had mentioned in one of the first nuggets on Tesla, is that he was the inventor where Edison was the businessman. And that's what worked at that time frame, because again, the contemporaries were the big bankers, Morgan, Rockefeller, Scientist. Wall Street Titans. He was not only with Edison, he was working with Einstein, and this was a tremendous time in American history. We all know the names Einstein, Edison, Westinghouse. Tesla just wasn't as savvy in a sense that he just he just wanted to do work and research and, and better society. And Again, he was these, quirky. He was, he was weird. quirky, there's no question about it, but he didn't have the political correctness, maybe is the best way to sum it up. Kind of snagged him. We have actually found out about a person who is considered the modern day Tesla. And I yes. believe we've talked to you in previous nuggets about how we tried to hunt down this man. Yeah, we did. We tried desperately, but we'll find him one day. His name is Eric P. Dollard, and he is considered the modern day Tesla. And he's just as uh, odd, if not more odd. At least Tesla lived in a hotel in Manhattan. Dollard lives, I think, last thing yeah, we well, knew, he lived in a car. He's in a car. beautiful part of the country, though. Yes, he in is. In California desert. But something about uh, Tesla, when he did die, you had mentioned in one of the previous nuggets that we also found out, this kind of hits modern day time frame, that when Tesla died, two guys went in and got most of his equipment. One of them is... Is Dr. John G. Trump. Our president, Donald Trump's uncle, whom Donald Trump refers to all the time, John Trump, is one of the only two guys that went in to actually get Nikola Tesla's his equipment. As this says, on January 9th, after learning of Tesla's death, the FBI ordered the alien property custodian to seize all of Tesla's belongings, even though Tesla was an American citizen. Tesla's entire estate from the hotel New Yorker and other New York City hotels was transported to the Manhattan Storage and Warehouse Company under OAP seal. Dr. John G. Trump, a professor at MIT and well-known electrical engineer serving as a technical aide to the National Defense Research Committee, was called to analyze the Tesla items in OAP custody to look for any material that could be sensitive in nature in relationship to the ongoing war at the time. After a three-day investigation, Trump concluded in his report that there was nothing that would constitute a hazard in unfriendly hands stating. Tesla's thoughts and efforts during the past 15 years were primarily of a speculative, philosophical, and somewhat promotional character, often concerned with the production and wireless transmission of power, but did not include new, sound, workable principles or methods for realizing such results. Now, this article indicates that Trump looked at this information at a different location, but we have heard and seen information that he was doing one of the men that actually went in and confiscated the paperwork. Right. It wasn't just his equipment. It was everything in his apartment. Most of of it supposedly has been returned to Serbia and is at the Nikola Tesla Museum in Belgrade, along with his ashes. One of the things that's interesting is they said that in a box purported to contain a part of Tesla's, quote, death ray, and that's one of the things that is associated with Tesla's name, they'll always talk about his death ray, Trump found a 45-year-old piece of basic electrical test equipment. He was a very interesting character, and once again, I know I've said it probably three or four times, but we use his experiments, and like it says here, uh, what John Trump said, that it was just typical stuff. But what we use today is thanks to Nikola Tesla. We use his ideas all day long, all night long. But others have perfected beyond where he was at as of current time frame. They have over 300 patents worldwide on his inventions. A lot of things that he did were never patented. They were stolen or used by other people. I do want to interject here, though, a little bit about Tesla's legacy and actually the New Yorker Hotel. They have a fabulous amount of information about him. It says, although the 19th century was a time of entrepreneurial genius for this country. Tesla's breakthrough with AC current earned him fame that surpassed that of Ford, Edison, or Marconi. His demonstrations of a high voltage apparatus known as Tesla coils were legendary, even if the audience didn't tend to be petrified by the show.
show. And here's a picture of Tesla, the inventor of our modern AC power with King Peter II of Yugoslavia in room 3327 where Tesla lived for 10 years. And they have on their site in his early years, to understand the importance of Tesla's legacy in New York and his deep bond with the New Yorker, we have to go back to the beginning. They believe that Tesla chose to live there because at the time, the New York Hotel was one of the most technologically advanced buildings in the world. And it is very likely that Tesla often visited the hotel's giant power plant 70 feet below ground, which had been designated a milestone in engineering by the IEEE. I learned while we were researching this that you can actually stay in rooms 3327 and 3328 where he lived. And I got to tell you, that's on my bucket list now. And again, here's a picture of the corner known as the Nikola Tesla Corner. And in the last 10 years of his life, Tesla called the New Yorker Hotel his home. He resided in rooms 3327 and 3328 from 1933 until his passing on January 7th, 1943. By the end of his life, Tesla had unfortunately become bankrupt and lived in relative obscurity with little means. Like he had said, he had died penniless. Every day, Tesla walked from the New Yorker Hotel to the corner of 40th Street and 6th Avenue to feed pigeons. This area is now known as Bryant Park. And that corner was officially named the Nikola Tesla Corner in 1994. And I do recommend that anyone interested in Tesla go to the NewYorkerHotel.com. They have a tremendous amount of information on him and some great pictures. We were driving down the road one day and I saw something out the corner of my eye. It's rainy. It's late. It's 10 o'clock at night. I whipped the car around. I remember he said, what are you doing? I said, you'll see. I turn around and I pull up and of course the business is closed. There's security there. And, and the same with the one in Milford, outside of Milford in Texas. I'm just kind of crazy enough sometimes to just go up and say, I'm going to go knock on that door and see what happens. It's amazing how many times I've been able to talk to people and sometimes invite you in and sometimes invite you and Paul in afterwards. But it's kind of risky, I guess, going in there. Don't suggest people do that unless you're absolutely confident in it. But it's fascinating because I've been able to talk to people who are in the research. We've seen some really, really neat things that we're just not necessarily at liberty to talk about. There is a lot of, not just evidence for what Tesla did in anybody's life in their home, just the fact that people are still expanding on it and where we're headed scientifically concerning the electricity. It's an amazing thing. The future is going to be very, very interesting. And again, it's just sad that he had to live the life he did that he isn't given credit. Right. And one last thing, I guess, uh, when you see a Tesla car, although Tesla had nothing to do with Elon Musk's Tesla car. When you see that name, just kind of remember that that name rep- is actually a representative of somebody who was real and who was a very, very influential person who has given all of our lives an enormous amount of engineering comfort. Don't even realize it. We take it for granted. And again, we hope that we have piqued your curiosity in Nikola Tesla. This is part three of a four-part series on Nikola Tesla. If you haven't watched Nuggets 114 and 115, I want to encourage you to do so. And in Nugget 117, we will conclude this four-part series. Thank you. And I do want to stay here. Let's please get on our knees and pray for our president as he is suffering with COVID. We all need to pray. He has a speedy recovery to the health that we always see him exhibit. Please tell a friend about our YouTube channel. We would really love to double our subscriber count this month, and we need you to help us to do that.